treatment and successfully responding to it. Germany has unveiled a revised strategy towards China that seeks to factor in what Berlin calls Beijing's increasing assertiveness. China is Germany's biggest trading partner and the Chancellor Olaf Scholz said the goal was not to disconnect but to avoid critical dependencies in the future. The de-risking strategy echoes that of the European Union. Germany has been stung in recent years by depending too heavily on Russian energy and by disruptions to supply chains during the coronavirus pandemic. BBC News. Hello and welcome to NewsHour. It's live from the BBC World Service Studios in central London. I'm Tim Prax. We're going to begin the programme today in Southeast Asia, in Thailand, where a very fundamental question appears to be on the line today. The question is, what future does democracy have in this country of more than 70 million? Parliament spent the day debating whether the man who won the elections in May should become Prime Minister. You might think the answer to that is pretty simple. Uh, yes. Peter Lim Jerome Rat, after all, and his pro-democracy coalition trounced the military-backed government. Except the Conservative establishment has dug its heels in, using Mr. Lim Jerome Rat and his Move Forwards party promise to reform the stringent laws prohibiting public criticism of the royal family as a pretext to withhold their support, with members of the unelected Senate either abstaining or voting against him. One of those senators, Kitasak, Ratana Waraha explained why. If our country were to have a politician who creates conflicts by supporting the youth of the nation to break the laws and violate Thailand's Les Majesty law, then that person shouldn't be allowed to form a government at all. It was an argument echoed by a serving Thai minister, Tanakorn Wangbul Konchana. We don't support Mr. Peter and the Move Forward Party in forming a government. Our stance is the same. It's because he has an idea to reform Section 112. That's all. There's nothing complicated. If you can get the majority of the votes, then you can go ahead and be the Prime Minister. But if you can't get enough votes, and you try to use the people as bargaining chips, then I don't think that's appropriate. Section 112 that the uh, minister was referring to is that Les Majesty clause in the criminal code that, uh, as it puts it, whoever defames or insults the royal family can be jailed for between 3 and 15 years. Well, as it turned out, the opposition did garner enough votes to block Peter Lim Jerome Rat. He fell 51 votes short. He promised to try again in a vote next week, as he explained outside Parliament today. With the result of what happened in the parliament today, I accept it, but I'm not giving up. I'm very sure. I accepted that that uh, I couldn't read 376. I got 324, and there's 200 abstains. Um, I also accepted that it's below expectations in the sense that a lot of people didn't come to become quorum. This was, uh, not voting as uh, they wish, I and mean, I understand that there's a lot of pressure on that as well as uh, several incentives that didn't allow them to vote uh, in alignment with the people. Well, Peter Lim Jerome Rat uh, speaking outside Parliament today. No. I to try again next week, um, sounding uh, reasonably upbeat about it all. Um, the BBC's Southeast Asia correspondent, Jonathan Head, is, is based in Bangkok. Does Peter Lim Jerome Rat have a chance to turn the vote around next week? No, he doesn't, and I think he knows it. Um, this is a harsh reality of Thai politics. You know, none of this was un unpredicted. None of it was unchoreographed. Uh, we've watched the dynamics since that stunning election win by Move Forward 